Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. I'm Jamie Holden, and I'm so happy that you decided to give us your time this week and to join us. Well guys, today is February 13th, which means tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I know yesterday was a really tough day, especially for a lot of my Philadelphia friends. All those Eagle fans I have had a really rough night last night. I heard from many of them. But today is time to put that behind us and look forward to tomorrow on Valentine's Day. And last year at Valentine's Day, I had the privilege of interviewing my good friend Walt Smith and talking to him about his many, many years of marriage and all the wisdom that he could share with men at Valentine's Day. So this year, we wanted to bring that interview back for you let you hear from Walt once again, and just guys, just listen to Walt's wisdom, his years of experience, as he teaches us how to be men who are legendary husbands and fathers. Well, I am so happy that once again this week we're going to be able to speak with one of my favorite men to serve in ministry with. Um, Pastor Walt Smith is a true ride-or-die man of God. And last week, Walt shared with us about his new ministry, Men of the Word. If you missed that episode, go back and listen to it when you're done with this one. It was really good, really interesting, and you really got to hear Pastor Walt's heart and his passion. And this week, we have a Valentine's Day episode for you. Um, Walt decided to come back and share with you how you can be a ride-or-die husband. Uh, He has years of experience doing this. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. So let's just jump right in. Welcome back, Walt. Hey, Jamie. Good to see you again, brother. Good to see you, too. Well, well, tell the guys how long you and Lynn have been married and how you guys met. We have been married since June the 5th, 1976. I wasn't even born then. Yeah, I'm old. My, my wife's not. She, she's, she's young, okay? Uh, we, I robbed the cradle. But, yeah, we met when we were in college. We both went to college with uh, engaged to different people kind of back home. Uh, I think I was just in love with love, uh, but uh, my, my ex sent me the engagement ring after I was at college for two months. She sent it in the mail and said, it's off, it's oh, over wow. with. So yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, so I just kind of Look, I dated a couple girls at college, but always had my eye on this uh, Linda Renee girl. And unknowingly, she had her eye on me. I just didn't think I was in her league. I didn't think as many guys do. And so uh, I guess it was our second year or so. I was on the soccer team at college, and I think she was keeping some of the stats. In fact, her one boyfriend was also on the soccer team and much better soccer player than I ever was. But uh, yeah, we uh, were in the the school library one night and, you know, it's supposed to be a quiet place, what have you. Well, we began playing army in the library and I think her and I got kicked out. Uh, The librarian, I've I forget the librarians. I think it was Brother Lindsay. Uh, we got kicked out and uh, we're in the hallway and uh, we kind of went from there. Our first date, we went to see a movie and I don't even remember what the movie was. I was just so enthralled and intrigued that she would go out with me and our, uh, our relationship developed from there. She's been my partner, my soulmate. She is a uh, the love of my life. She's my very, very best friend. And I mean that with all, all my heart. I, I can tell her anything and have, and she likewise. So that's how we, we started out. She's from the city, Baltimore, and I'm from way up in the country, central PA. She met my dad maybe once, maybe twice. I think it was just one time. He was really sick. It was just a couple months before he died. Uh, but I think it was either over Thanksgiving or Christmas vacation, I had taken her home. 
uh, and she knows our history much better than I do. But my dad, wise man that he was, he said, I've told my son to get out of these hills and find a girl from the city. And I'm glad that he found you, Lynn. So uh, that's what I did. And uh, man, we've, we've, we've had some great times, gone through some real seasons of, of, of discouragement, despair, but God has been so faithful and so good. God always comes through. He does. Absolutely. He really does. In a big well, way. A lot, of, a lot of people think romance has to be big and over top these days, it has to be big, dramatic, and expensive. And But in the early years of your marriage, you wrote a devotional for our year long Bible reading plan talking about the early years of your marriage. And money was short for you guys then. Um, what did you do to show your life that you love your wife that you loved her in that situation? <laughs> Money at times still is short, especially <laughs> in retirement. I found that out. Um, I had enough money the first day I was retired. I was going to wonder what I was going to do the second day. But uh, seriously, we just did little stuff. I think her home pastor, who was George Rajawano, and uh, uh, not George Jr., George Sr., uh, had really instilled in her and her parents some, some great values that doesn't have to be big and over expensive. And my pastor, uh, Walter Shell, and then the pastor I worked with as youth pastor, E.A. Farrell, which was a phenomenal guy, he, he, had a, he was a big guy. And E.A. was able to teach me to be very practical, down to earth, but easy ways to romance your wife. And I mean, sometimes we go out for ice cream or we just stay, play board games, um, try to do different things. Um, and then throughout the years, again, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, I think it was about 25 or 30 years ago, I, I, I did borrow a, a car from somebody in the church, a really nice car. Uh, because I was a pastor. Pastors never drive any really nice cars, but it was a really nice car. And I, I had written an invitation that had uh, asked her for a date. So I go out and I get the car and then I get to her and take her out. And uh, I think we just went to a hamburger joint or something. Uh, but then there's been other times that we've been blessed that we, we did things a little more extravagant. We, we did plan. I did squirrel away some money so that we could do uh, some nice fancy outings. Uh, one time we went to the Watergate uh, Hotel restaurant in Washington, DC. And uh, we each, we were with another couple, we each had our own individual uh, waiters that just waited on us. Wow. And after a while, we, we'd take a drink of water and put it down and the waiter would fill that cup of water. I mean, we just had a time, but I had an old Ford Maverick that we drove up in front it was a stick shift and rusty bible college car and i had to have the valet park it for me i mean that <laughs> that was priceless but we we've learned and and my wife has been just so practical she's never demanded the big and the, the fancy but there's times i've wanted to give her that uh, last year on our wedding anniversary, I'd never really properly proposed to her, like down on the knee type of thing. And so I took her out to a very nice restaurant and uh, I did just that, got on my knee. I had another engagement ring with her, a little better than the first one I bought her. Oh. And, uh, you know, she teared up and what have you, but it, it was romantic. That's awesome. So we, we could do the small things. Uh, when we were in college and even the first couple of years of our marriage, I had people in my home church that would send us five or $10 and just say, Hey, take your wife out. My home pastor would do that for us. And he says, I know you don't have a lot. So here, go do this, go do that. We, we get joy now because of her physical limitations. Uh, sometimes sitting at home and watching a Hallmark movie that I know that you're not real keen about Jamie, but we watch a Hallmark movie and I've, you know, I suck it up because <laughs> she'll watch sports with me. All right. And uh, 
So we've we've learned that. So it doesn't have to be extravagant, but there's the little things you can do uh, that that make it right. So what's the best advice that you'd give a guy who's newly married, say less than five years married? Best advice? Stay true. The temptations are just unbelievable. Um, and I, I don't even really understand how our young men are facing some of the things they face today as when I was a young man, but still the temptations are there. Um, and the one church we, we pastored, I, I think we were the oldest, this was like 20 years ago, we were the oldest couple, it was very young congregation, men in their 20s and 30s and uh, oftentimes many of those were traveling. I think almost all of my, my board members were traveling throughout the week and there's the temptations when you travel as a man uh, in that room at night or to go to the bar or to call a, a phone number, uh, see something on the television screen. And, and I was constantly praying for those young men, constantly. Um, you have to keep yourself pure. And I know you've said it countless times in our mentor, you give us uh, equipment and the tools uh, to protect us on our uh, online applications and our online um, uh, surfing. And that's so important. Biblical uh, things that we see from men in God's word that have failed, but then come back to the Lord. Hopefully we would not be there, that we could not fail, that we would be faithful to our spouse. I've been faithful to myself, my spouse for 45 years. She has been faithful to me. We've had to work on it. It does not come easy. The distractions are there. There's times you have to put on the blinders. I love sports, as I said before, but man, the commercials, sometimes I just got to check out of them. You know that. Um, so be faithful, be true to your spouse. We all change physically. I look at pictures from when we were a young couple. We were a handsome young couple. My wife is still beautiful, but I put on a few pounds. I've got some gray hair and some wrinkles now. And so what do I do to, to make sure I'm presentable to her? I think sometimes we have the feeling as a, as a young man, the first five years of marriage, well, now we've got her, you know, don't have to do anymore. I, I won her, you know, it's like a trophy. How sad. That's not what God's called us to. We're to love our wives. And so even when we go through the physical changes, when we go through life's journeys, we've got to be there for each other. And even when we fall and even when we fail, We've got to pick up those pieces, get some help from various sources, and to move on. Because I do believe that marriages are made to last. Yeah, I believe that too. And it's 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 hard in today's society. Men are bombarded from every direction with sexual content and temptation. And so are women. I'm not saying women face the same thing. Um, but this is a podcast for men. Um and you just see it so often the men just are falling and they're falling away and getting trapped and it breaks my heart. And like, that's why we put so much stuff out at man tours about covenant eyes and stuff like that, because men, there's so many simple things we can do to protect ourselves. And this is, well, are you willing to do it? We're going to take a quick break here, guys. We're going to be right back though with more with pastor Walt. Um, I have some more questions for him. He's so gracious to give us some of his time this week. So we'll be right back, guys. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. God is looking for men with legendary grit. Do you want to be known as a legendary man of God? If so, then return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear as we examine the lives of 10 men who understood what it takes to become a living legend. It takes legendary grit. From these men's lives, we not only see shining examples of legendary men, 
but we also see models we can follow to develop grit in our own lives. So saddle up. It's time to become the man God created you to be, a man of legendary grit. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Hey guys, Jim Pence here. I am looking forward to the North Central Section Man Tour Conference to be held on February 25th at Freedom Life Church in Lewisburg. And if you've never come out to a Man Tour event before, you are going to want to this year. You're not going to want to miss it. Man Tour events provide a great opportunity to connect with other men of God that has awesome worship, great teaching, and just amazing fellowship. And this year, the conferences promise to be legendary. So I hope to see you, if not at Lewisburg, at one of the other mentor conferences in your area. God bless. It's great to connect with you. Yep, you're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Are you looking for legendary truth that makes a legendary man? Well, it's time to mount up and take part in this year-long Bible reading plan for Mantor Ministries that is designed to help you become a strong, on-fire, legendary man of God. The Ride or Die Daily Bible Plan features 52 devotionals on fundamental truths, six days of Bible reading, and a devotional on the seventh day. It has relevant topics for men to aid in spiritual growth as we look at the legendary truths all men of God need to know. Every week there's a weekly memory verse, and we have hand-selected Bible passages to keep you engaged all year. So it's time to saddle up and become a legendary man of God. For more information on the Ride or Die Daily Bible Plan, you can visit mantorministries.com slash Bible Plan, where you can either sign up to receive the free email version, or you can purchase your paperback copy of Ride or Die, the Daily Bible Plan. Guys, take advantage of this as we head into 2023 and become a man of the word. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. Don't forget to visit iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Hey everyone, Jamie Holden here from Mantor Ministries. I just wanted to let you know that the Mantor Ministries website has been updated for the 2023 Legendary Mantor Conferences. You can go to the website, find out all about the speakers, the dates, the locations, and we added something new this year. We added media packs that you can download to help promote the mentor to your church's men. The media packet has bulletins that you can print. It has a flyer you can print and hang up. There is specific promo videos to promote your specific event to the men in your church. There's a short version, a long version. There's a video that's a personal invite for me and a couple of other really awesome promo videos that you can use to promote this conference to your men. So make sure you visit MantorMinistries.com, download your media pack today, and start promoting the event now. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the Legacy Mantors. Also, the website's been updated that you can start registering now. The registration page is up, is up, it's set, it's ready to go. So make sure you visit MantorMinistries.com, start promoting the Legacy Mantors to your men. And I'm just so excited to see what God has this year through the Mantor Conference. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back, guys, as we continue this powerful message. Welcome back, guys, as we continue our discussion with Pastor Walt Smith. One of the questions I want to ask you is, Paul talks in the Bible about how we need to, well, I'm single, but men who are married need to love their wives like Christ loved the church. What exactly does that mean to you? Ephesians chapter 5, Jamie. Ephesians chapter 5. Christ loved the church so much that he gave everything. I mean, he gave his life. And so as men, that, that's what we need to do. It, it's, not, it's not our agenda. 
personally. We're, we're partnered now with another individual. We're partnered with a female uh, as God intended it to be. And so now it's not my life, but what can I do for her? And how can I help her? It's difficult when you're, when you're young husbands, the family, children, uh, work, hobbies, your buddies. Uh, there's so many things that pull at us. But Christ gave everything for us. He loved us, gave his life. And in fact, if you read in Ephesians chapter 5, there's more said to the man than there is to the woman. And I know the women don't like the thing about submission, but if a husband would truly love his wife, the wife has no problem with the submission part. And it doesn't mean to be under, it means to support. It's not that we as men push them down. And, and, and this is one of my buttons that gets pushed. Um, I have always opened the door for my wife, getting in and out of the car from a young, when we were dating, up until just yesterday, we were out yesterday, she had to go doctors and what have you. I opened the door, help her in. I uh, took up years ago grocery shopping because when we first were married, we were not able to have children after a couple of years. So we put in for foster care, we fostered numerous children uh, but we also at the same time put in for adoption. And uh, where we were living at the time, you could not adopt those that you were fostering. And that some places has changed since that. But be that as it may, we had put in for adoption. And wouldn't you know, we've, we've got several foster kids and all of a sudden child comes up for adoption. So we're taking the adoption. We've got foster kids. Then within just another two weeks, we got another adopted child. So we got a house full of kids. My wife was not able to go to the grocery store and start grocery shopping. So from 1979, 1980 to this day, I still do the grocery shopping. She used to do a lot of the cooking. Now, because of her physical disabilities, I, I've done a lot of cooking in the recent, and I don't, I don't begrudge that at all. And we learned that when our kids, when our adopted kids were in their teen years, you know, we get a little more freedom. She loved to mow the grass where we, in fact, the early days in Altoona back in 2005, 2006, she would do the riding uh, mower because we had a whole acre of ground and I would do the trimming. But then when she got sick, she could no longer do that. And so that, that was taken from her. But we just learned our roles and learned that. And as such, we just learned respect. And that, that's the word that just comes to me right now is, is respect. We've had to learn to respect each other and respect each other's roles. Every place is different and every marriage is different. But I think some of the fundamentals aren't. Now, when I went to the different churches that I pastored, my role was the same. I was brought in as the pastor. She had to find a whole different role. And as pastor and spouse, it's intriguing because you change everything. I mean, if you're a lay person in a church, you know, you may change jobs, but you're still living in the same house. You're still going to the same church. But when you are a pastor and wife or, or a pastor and a husband, uh, Everything changes. Your work changes, your church changes, your friends change, and even your role and your activity in the church. One church, you may be involved in the choir. The next church, you may be involved in girls' ministry. Next church, my wife was involved in the women's ministry. So her role was so different in each one of our churches. And that's what I had to really be careful of, that she would find her place of ministry because she was called just as I was called uh, and not take advantage of that. Yeah, and it's so true. I mean, that Ephesians passage gets so misused so often. <laughs> and I would, I, no, I've never seen a woman 
when her husband treats her the way the Bible tells him to, has had any trouble doing the submitting part because she's being treated well. She's being treated with respect and loved and as an equal. And it's just not an issue. So <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine. But anyways, um, it's true. Our call job as men, even I'm not married, but I live with my sister. We work together. And my job is to treat her with love and respect and do everything I can to make her succeed and grow. And um, it's just what God calls us to do. Yeah. So it's a good word you had there. And I've, and I've witnessed you do that with your sister. You know, and you're you're to be admired for that and respected for that, uh, because a lot of times we do we treat females as as not as good. And in many parts of the world, they do walk behind us. One of the worst things I and it's a pet peeve. And I may get somebody listening today that may not like it. And that's OK. Uh, my my opinion is my opinion. I don't like women walking behind a man because he thinks he's superior. And I've seen that. I've witnessed it in the church that, you know, she's carrying everything and he just kind of walking in, you know, and you do this and you do that. And even though it's not stated, it's implied through their actions. I really enjoy watching a young husband put his hand on the, the middle of her back and escorting her in and helping her find a seat, helping with the children. I love seeing that because that, I believe, is what Paul was saying in Ephesians 5. You love your wife. You respect her. And it's, it's, a, it's an all-around love, you know, agape, you know, uh, an unconditional love that no matter what happens. It's a phileo. Again, my wife is my very, very best friend. Um, and it's an eros which is a, means erotic, but essential. And, and that changes as we age too. And we won't go in real detail here today, brother, but let me tell you, as we get older, we are not as active sexually, intimately physical uh, as we once were when we were younger, but it doesn't mean that there can't be intimacy in a marriage as you get older. Um, when an individual has physical disabilities, sometimes intimacy isn't even possible. But as far as physical, but intimacy is in the relationship and should be there. And I think that's where some people fall out. I, I know a couple that as soon as he had a stroke and some other things that the woman and they were, they were in their 60s, early 70s, she divorced him left him alone. They were church people. I'm thinking, how do you do that? You know, just because a physical intimacy isn't there any longer, what, what happened? And it, and it had to be uh, over a course of time, I'm sure. But boy, when your spouse needs you, and, and it is for better or for worse, it's sickness or in health. And that's what I signed up to on January the 5th, 1976. I signed up for it. Uh, I've told my wife that I said, honey, I'm with you, baby. I'm with you. So she has some good days and she has really some not so good days. So, but I'm with her. Yeah. I know that Lynn has a lot of health issues and we pray for her. I know you took a vow, good and bad sickness and health. And I admire that you keep that vow. You take care of her, you help her. And it's one of the things I admire most about you as somebody who also struggles physically I know what it's like to have to have somebody helping you. And I, I don't like having somebody help me, but I know it's necessary. I'm sure she wishes she didn't have to rely on you so much, but okay. reality is what it is. And I know that you're a loving man who does what's best for his wife because you, not just because you love her, but because you made a vow before God and you honor that vow. And I, I commend you and I appreciate that about you so much. It's what makes you one of the men I respect the most. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And we saw uh, right before we retired, uh, we were in a great program in Altoona where I was able to have a, a nurse come in, some caregivers throughout the week and do some things for my wife. But we saw where that program was initially changing and especially through COVID, uh, the early days of COVID. And so we knew all the timing was in, was in place. Uh, I could have kept pastoring I, I love pastoring, 
but I saw that my duty was not so much pastoring, because that's, that's what I do, but it's not who I am. Who I am, I need is faithful to my wife. So when we did retire from full-time pastoring uh, and now started this ministry of men in the word, that I'm able to stay home more often. I've got my own office here at this, this house that we live in, and uh, I can check on her and doctor's appointments so much easier. So again, that was part of God's blessing. The same program isn't here where we live, and those programs are uh, constantly in flux uh, with social services. But I've been commissioned from the Lord to love my wife as Christ loved the church. So we're at Valentine's Day. This is actually going to yes. air on Valentine's Day. Um, how are you going to celebrate it this year? This year? I'm not sure. A lot of times we go day to day because of, of her health. So it's, it's difficult to plan out. Uh, I know we had some plans uh, on the, around Christmas time, and that had to get shifted because uh, one day she'll wake up and just, just have some horrible episodes. But uh, um, I don't know if she'll be listening to this or not, but I'm hoping to take her out. I uh, squirreled some money aside that maybe we'll go overnight somewhere. We've done that before. I, uh, we go to a uh, a little secluded place, uh, bed and breakfast. We've done that a couple of times. Just surprise her, say, honey, pack your bag, you know, and not tell her where we're going. Uh, one time we flew somewhere. So uh, I I've got a couple ideas, but I got to be careful because she, she may listen to this. Thing. <laughs> but I'm hoping we'll go out. We like to go out and uh, explore different places to eat. Uh, she has a couple uh, movies she wants to see. So maybe that. Uh, my wife is not big on flowers. I know some women are. So if your wife or, you know, whoever is, it, is hung up on the, the flowers, do the flowers. My wife says, spend the money on her that will last. Uh, she's not real big on candy, although she likes candy. But uh, the price of flowers these days, guys. Oh. <laughs> Price on everything these days. <laughs> but, but we'll do other little things too. Um, last year, I had these little cards made and they were in a nice little box and they were personalized cards with her name on it. It was really cheap. It was like nine bucks or 10 bucks online. Like this one says, I appreciate your smile, Lynn. Your smile makes me smile. So she can pick up one for every day of the year. Uh, I kept out a bunch of them so that um, I could just place them around, put it on the fridge, you know, on her pillow at night. Uh, here's one says, you're the first person I want to see when I wake up and the last person I want to see before I go to sleep. There, there's all sorts of things. And even if you don't want them professionally made, make them yourself. You know, take some time during, you know, halftime and, you know, you know, the Super Bowl that we just watched, you know, hey, you know, do do whatever to keep that fire ignited and, and burning. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think that's, that's really cool with the cars. And she loved that. <laughs> yeah. And, and about every fourth card has her name on it. So it was really uh, like, I appreciate you, Lynn, for bringing out the best in me. Just little ones. Lynn, you're the most giving and selfless person I've ever met. Uh, you're such a rare gem. So she loves reading those things. So awesome. Hopefully she's not watching this so that I can still use those. <laughs> well, as we wrap up today, Walt, what do you believe are the keys to a happy marriage? Marriage oh, mercy. Walt Smith. Don't, don't overdo your career or your profession. Um, I think we're so career driven, so um, driven in what we do. And again, what we do is not who we are. And I think especially, and I'm speaking as a pastor now, we're so driven. So, you know, we've got to succeed, succeed, succeed. And I think we're so wrapped up in this world of success that all God's called us to be is faithful and effective. And so I see so many times, not just pastors, but men, men in the church, so driven that 
their career is put ahead of their family, their career and in, in their profession. Because we do, we spend 40, 50, 60 hours outside of the home during the week. And we come home, we're tired. But oftentimes our spouses do too. And we have to pour into them. Too often I did take work home. Now, for years, my wife worked as my administrative assistant. So we knew the ins and outs. She, I could tell her I needed a letter done and she could, she could type it. But we found we had to just kind of unplug from that when we come home. And, and I, of anybody, had the harder time, I believe, just unplug it. Because I, you know, what do we do about this? And 10 o'clock at night, I'm talking about, you know, this decision that we got to make it. She don't want to hear that. She, she, she wants me to be thinking about her and talking about our next vacation or, you know, our, our next time out or, you know, about the kids. And if I had to do it over, I'd really work harder on that area, I believe. Um, we've worked through that, but uh, I, I had to really learn not to discuss work at home and especially around the kids you know we 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 made it a practice not to do that so our our kids were a little bit alienated from some of that but they knew i mean our kids were intelligent enough knew that there was something happening with us but um uh, i just realized that i can't do enough to help her know she's precious and that as guys, we've got to continually trying to be fresh, um, sensitive. Maybe that's even a better, better idea to be sensitive to their needs. Uh, and I wish I would have been more sensitive through the years to my wife's needs. Uh, I'm still trying, still working on it. Not there yet. But if I can say one thing to the guys, we can do it and you can do it and you don't need to feel like you're a pansy or you're you're not masculine when we're helping them with their needs because i think it is the epitome of masculinity to be there for our wives in the good times and bad and i just hope maybe someone can take lesson from this today well, guys, I encourage you, take to heart what Walt said here today. He's got, what, 45 years of experience? My math right there? I think so. I know, because I'm going to turn 45. I'm really upset about it. But anyways, <laughs> um, thank you, Walt, so much for taking time today to join us. Um, I know you're a busy guy. you got a lot going on. I really appreciate you giving us your time the past two weeks just to share with the men and just help them grow in their walk with God. So thank you. Well, thank you, Jamie. You've, you've been a blessing, still are a blessing. The only thing I got on my schedule this afternoon is a nap. That's what's <laughs> great about retirement. I got a uh, nap. Good day. It's freezing cold and rainy, so you enjoy that nap. Um, okay, brother. One more time, though. You said it in the last podcast, but where can men find out more about you and Men of the Word if they didn't hear that part last time? Yes. Menoftheword.info is the website. Menoftheword.info men of the word dot info uh, i'm on facebook uh twitter instagram uh, even on the the website at men of the word dot info uh, there's a form they can fill out contact me email me uh, i check it off and so uh, uh things begin to fill up here in the spring through all the rest of the year but i do have some dates available and if i could help any church i'd be willing to do that um I often drive three or four hours on a Sunday morning, do the portrayal, drive back in the afternoon. So oftentimes there's not a cost with an overnight stay, but that doesn't even have to uh, be a burden to a church. Please don't let that. Uh, we just want to minister God's grace. God's blessed us. So uh, we just want to be there if we can help you again. And if they need uh, some help, like a video or something. Uh, I'd be more than willing to try to put that together for them uh, to complement either a sermon that they're preaching, a sermon series, or uh, just a special event. Yeah, well, Walt, thank you. Like I said, you're one of my favorite people to serve with. 
whether at a man tour or whether we're in a lobby at a church racing my scooter against your knee scooter that one time or whatever we're doing, you know, I always love hanging out with you. It's always a lot of fun. So thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thank you. The man tour guys, final thought. Guys, we're out of time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to remind you that you can find everything that you need to know about this year's Mantor Conferences, our legendary Mantor Conferences, at our website. Guys, you do not want to miss everything that God is going to do this year at our legendary Mantors. So visit MantorMinistries.com for a complete list of locations, speakers, and while you're there, download a media packet for your Mantor. Each media packet contains a variety of promo videos for you to use to promote the event to your men, as well as flyers and bulletin inserts that you can print. Guys, God has big plans for this year's mentors. Don't miss that one he has for you. And guys, please keep us in prayer. We're on the road the next six weeks straight doing mentor conferences. We're going to cross the state of Pennsylvania many times as we go and we share with the men about what it means to be a legendary man of God. So keep us in prayer. But like I said, we're out of time for this week, but thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe. We have five-star rating and review wherever, wherever you get your podcasts and share this podcast to your social media. Also, make sure to check out books and resources at mantorministries.com and join the legendary truth Bible plan as well. Guys, have a great Valentine's Day tomorrow, and we'll see you next time on the Mantor Guy Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Be sure to visit mantorministries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mentor conferences. Hey, men. Uh, this is Scott Kramer, lead pastor at GT Church near Reading, Pennsylvania. And I wanted to take just a minute and invite you to join us for one of the Mantor men's events that are happening uh, in 2023. These are going to be incredible opportunities for you to be challenged, be inspired, be encouraged in your faith, in your walk with Christ, and as a man of God. Uh, I've been speaking at these Mantor events for many years now. I've always been encouraged and blessed by being there, by sharing my heart, what God puts on my heart for men. And I've also seen other men be very edified and built up um, and challenged in their faith. And so I want to encourage you to come. Uh, if you're a pastor or a men's leader at your church, man, bring a group of guys and come to the one that's nearest to your church and be encouraged. I just believe that these are amazing opportunities to bring men and to, to come together as men of God and to be inspired and to be freshly challenged by a word of God in, in our hearts. And so I hope to see you at one of these events. I believe that you'll be blessed and you'll be inspired and encouraged. God bless you. I'll see you there. Mentor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.